Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons history in the year uh, in the year 2016, the 43rd year of Dungeons and Dragons history, and we're going to look at it through the cattle through the filter of clear catalyst location entity artifact and relationship. So, who was the catalyst for Dungeons and Dragons in the year 2016? It was a very interesting lady by the name of Winona Ryder. Now, Winona Ryder was a famous movie star from the 80s and the 90s. She had uh, Heathers and quite a few uh, Beetlejuice um, and quite a few other uh, very good movies. I think she was in the she was in the Crucible, right? She uh, she did very well in the 80s and 90s and had a um, a very successful career as a movie star. Well, in the year 2016, she's continuing to uh, act. Um, that is her profession, and uh, she's also been in Star Trek. She's she's had a really robust career, and in 2016, she had to decide how she would grow that 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 career. Well, the way she decided to grow that career was through a little show called Stranger Things. The Stranger Things is really important for several reasons. One. Um, Stranger Things is one of the one of the reasons for the success of Netflix. So Stranger Things is a little show uh, that is about supernatural happenings for uh, tweens <laughs> uh, in the 1980s, right? And and their small world in the 80s. And a big part of that show was Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is showed with is showed with an incredible amount of goodwill in that show. It's shown as for every single thing it actually is. It's shown in its truest form of the game. It's shown with friends playing with other friends around a table with a dungeon master and players, with people really excited about these fantasy elements and these fantasy stories, right? Will is the dungeon master in, uh, in Stranger Things. And so Dungeons and Dragons is shown very, very clearly in the show, right? And Stranger Things uh, explodes in popularity. It has it has an explosion of views, and it's one of the largest. Uh, it's absolutely one of the the largest um, collections of. Uh, it's one of the largest viewed shows that's ever been on Netflix, and it's been very very popular and very successful. It has two two seasons. Both seasons were critically and commercially. Uh, Lauded, right? It was they're critically successful. It was critically re received. It was received uh, very well critically, and it did commercially well, right? Uh, it really, you know, it, it paid Netflix back, right? In that there were a lot of people who absolutely loved that, and Winona Ryder was absolutely one of the key aspects for why that story succeeded, right? Now here's the thing. Um, Stranger Things has been directly helpful in spreading the good word of Dungeons and Dragons and helping people to see the game for what it truly is. Like this super fun hobby that's really special, that helps to bond friendships together, uh, that interesting, compelling people play, right? That's what it is. Not everybody could see that. Stranger Things showed that to people very, very directly, right? The Demogorgon had a moment. Right, you know, like it was, it was definitely a thing, right? And Winona Ryder is one of the catalysts helping to push Dungeons and Dragons forward. And Stranger Things is massively successful and gives a huge tailwind to Dungeons and Dragons. And one of the things that's really incredibly uh, wonderful, right, is uh, so all everything I said, you know, then it's it's hard to track. One, it's very clear that Stranger Things helped D and D, but it's hard to track how, right? But one of the very, very real, very practical, very uh, tangible proofs that Dungeons and & Dragons and Stranger Things are tied together and their success is tied together is uh, they just released on pre-order in um, on Amazon a very wonderful, special, unique product, which is uh, the Stranger Things Dungeons & Dragons Beginners uh, set, uh, uh, Beginners Box, Beginners Box. So it is an officially branded Stranger Things starter box and an officially branded Dungeons and Dragons starter box, and you can actually play the the, uh, the actual adventure that Will ran for his players. But you but you can all you know, and it, and it it also serves as an introduction to the rules, 
and it does everything that a, that a starter box, a basic starter box would do. do. So it's, it's really, really wonderful, just very, very exciting, and uh, it's, just, it's just a wonderful thing, and, and, uh, it, and it's important because it's part of that, that uh, transition, it's part of that tailwind that Stranger Things is giving Guns and Dragons. And Winona Ryder was an absolutely key person to make that show successful, and, uh, and I, really, I really think uh, she, more than any other character in that show, really helped to ground that show and and because there were a lot of really unusual aspects in that but Winona Ryder really grounded that with a mother who cared for her son and uh, she brought the emotional gravitas that that story needed so Winona Ryder is the catalyst for Dungeons and Dragons in the year 2016 so what is our location for Dungeons and Dragons in the year 2016 well it's Whitby England okay now Whitby is just a small tiny little town in England and um, in England, we're very fortunate in the British, uh, in the in Great Britain, in the UK, the United Kingdom, in England, Dungeons and Dragons is a much beloved intellectual property, and there are uh, hundreds of thousands, if not in the low millions of players, in England who play Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it's uh, they have fully, em- uh, the UK has fully embraced Dungeons and Dragons. But one of the reasons why we're talking about be- uh, about Whitby, England is because of Brexit, right? So in the year 2016, uh, Brexit became um, a very... Actually, so at this point right now, uh, the U- United Kingdom has has decided, has voted as a people to say, we no longer wish to belong to the European Union, right? And now the, po- the politicians are going about the incredibly difficult task of delivering what the people have requested, right? Of doing what politicians are supposed to do, which is delivering what the people have asked the politicians to do and lawfully voted for the politicians to do, right? And there was a referendum and the, and the, the British people said, we no longer belong, seek to be belong to the European Union. Now, this is a huge, absolutely massive decision because uh, England is a really, uh, in England, uh, Great Britain, the UK, United Kingdom, it is an absolute, it's a pillar of the European Union, right? And there are um, dozens, there's more than two dozen uh, nations that belong to the European Union. But Great Britain is absolutely one of the most important ones, right? And as uh, Great Britain exits the European Union, there is incredible attention to that action being, there's incredible attention being paid to that action. Because if it's successful, it could really inspire other nations to break from the European Union as well. And the uh, European Union is by far one of the most prominent, most publicly uh, known examples of an international combination of nations, right? And if it becomes apparent that leaving that union, right, is beneficial for the people, for the nations that leave it, that could that could really change the entire shape of the European Union and the commercial relationships, the political relationships, the cultural relationships, and even the social relationships they have, right? So while Dun- while Dungeons & Dragons designers, players, and, um, and dungeon masters in Great Britain are enjoying their game, they also have, uh, their minds and hearts are really, really taken up by this either strong, strong desire for Brexit to occur or for a strong, strong desire for Brexit not to occur. Not many people are on the fence about it, right? But it, it's it's a really large world um, world event which is affecting Dungeons and Dragons the design, uh, Dungeons and Dragons dungeon masters, and um, and players, dungeon masters and players. By the way, there are no uh, great, uh, there are no British Dungeons and Dragons designers. All the design work for Dungeons and Dragons, the official game is done in Seattle, and to my knowledge, none of them are native uh, uh, Great Britain, uh, Great Britainers. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure there's a better term for that. Uh, so who is the entity in the year 2016? Whoa. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Boy, was this an entity and a half. Uh, it is Donald Trump, our new president, right? Uh, Donald Trump has absolutely shattered uh, the concept of who and what a president is. Uh, there was debate 
previously that a, that a president should have character and that uh, there should be, you know, um, some kind of semblance of someone who, you know, upheld traditional values and cared about uh, traditional traditional values, right? That, you know, and th that debate, I think, really started rolling with uh, Bill Clinton and saying, you know, uh, all the old tropes of you're married, you, uh, um, you're faithful to your spouse, um, and many, many other traditional values that were similar to that one, uh, Bill Clinton kind of like, you know, was like, hey, that's not really that important. And boy, uh, Donald Trump came along and just put a placard up and said, hey, all your notions of what a president should be and should not be, you can throw them out the window because it's celebrity time. And that's the biggest thing that I think Donald Trump is known for is he is, a, he is he's not our first celebrity president, but I think he is absolutely may be the the start of a wave of there will never ever be another president that is not a celebrity because one of the things that's happened with Donald Trump he's been truly dramatic it's been truly a dramatic political cultural and social changes have been triggered by by Donald Trump's election right and so one of the things that ha that that has really happened is and I think one of the reasons why there's a you know there's huge amounts of debate about why Donald Trump was elected and I think the, the reason for why Donald Trump was elected was, is incredibly simple, right? Uh, basically, um, the vast majority of people who run for the president are Washington insiders. They're born and, they're born and raised uh, politicians, right? And they are, uh, you know, they are politicians through and through, through. And one of the things about a politician that just is absolutely true, doesn't matter what line, what side, doesn't matter if you're red or blue, but if you ask a, a, a true dyed-in-the-wool politician, right? And again, it doesn't matter if they're dyed blue or if they're dyed red. If you ask them virtually any question, you don't really need them to answer. You can almost always tell their answer from their, their point in time circumstances, from uh, their allegiances, from who has funded them, uh, and from the answers they've given before. Because it, because it is almost one in a thousand questions will have anything other, will have any derivation from what you would expect them to say or what they've already said, right? And so Donald Trump just absolutely took a sledgehammer to that and said, you can ask me any question in the world and you have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth. And not only will it be different than what I've said before, it'll be different from what I said yesterday, right? And you have no idea what I will say or do, right? And that just broke the mold, right? And I think the reason why Donald Trump will, will absolutely be the, the go-forward celebrity president saying celebrity presidents are all America will ever have is the reason is the, because the, the press is absolutely addicted to it. Like they have seen a president that is unpredictable. They have seen a president that really is an independent person, not an independent political uh, politician, but an independent person. Right. In that, like a person that is saying that you truly like it's so clear, like that. No, absolutely. No one is controlling um, uh, Donald Trump. There, there's there's entire groups begging for someone to come in and, you know, be very in uh, kind of just put a cap on what he's saying, what he's tweeting, you know, uh, his actions. And it's so clear that he's he's independent. And that that is. Like that's just never been there's the likes of that has never been seen before. Um and not not in a hundred years at least, right? Because really previously we just had politicians and, and Donald Trump really in virtually no way is a politician. He's a businessman who became president, right? And even in the role of president, he barely functions as a politician. It's incredible, right? And so Donald Trump is a massive change for um for every Dungeons & Dragons designer, dungeon master, and player. And without a doubt, really, the, the existence of Donald Trump has really even changed the vast majority, uh, I would say it's changed all games that, ha that are being played by people over the age of 18. And the reason why is they're all voters, right? And, uh, and one thing that, that Donald Trump was was incredibly divisive. And I, find, I have found it incredibly rare to find people who are on, uh, you know, on the red and blue at the same table, right? And so I think just, you know, even even our Dungeons and Dragons games have been reshaped by what people feel on Duns on 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 Donald Trump. And without a doubt, boy, take a look at Twitter, man. You will definitely see that um 
where people fall on Donald Trump, it really lines up very, very, very closely in what games they're actually playing and who they're playing with. Actually, who they are inviting to their Dungeons & Dragons table. It, it really is, it's almost a lock. Like, you know, if you're for or against, you're either going to be at the table or you're not. So, did Donald Trump, uh, excuse me, the Donald Trump, um, he, he acts as the entity for year 2016. What is our artifact for the year 2016? It is the 5th edition Dungeon Master Guide. It is the 5th traditional dungeon, dungeon Master Guide to be printed. It completes the 5th set of hardback books that, uh, that, are, that contain all the rules of Dungeons & Dragons in its full complexity, right? Um, it's truly an incredible achievement. It is the achievement of Mike Merles, right? It is... Uh, fifth edition becomes the capstone. And it will remain as a very, very special edition because it is the edition that delivered stability back to Dungeons & Dragons. Fourth edition was the, the darkest of all editions. Uh, there were many, many people who thought the game would not survive that edition. Uh, and it was quite possible uh, in the middle of it that, that that Pathfinder would carry forward and Dungeons & Dragons could fall into the wayside and become just a forgotten relic, right? But uh, Mike Merle saved the game with 5th edition and um, and finished that work with the 5th with the fifth edition Dungeon Master Guide. The 5th edition, uh, with the completion of the Dungeon Master Guide, the 5th edition becomes also the first game, the first edition, to my knowledge, that would have a redacted creators list, right? So one of the things that, that has happened is, um, you know, there were uh, no less than 20, I think there was between 20 and 50 people listed as creators for the 5th edition uh, book, given writing credits, giving playtesting credits, their name is on the creators list. And 5th uh, edition is the first book to have multiple editions with different listings of creators in it, right? Saying uh, this person was originally listed as a creator and now that person is no longer listed as a creator. So in many ways, fifth edition just breaks the mold and continues to be a unique edition that no one else has ever really, uh, that, that has things that have happened within its own distinct history that have never occurred in any other edition. Uh, very, very interesting, all right? What is the relationship for Dungeons & Dragons in the year 2016. The relationship is the, is interaction. Okay. Now we have talked um, very much. Now, of course, the three pillars of Dungeons and Dragons uh, put forward by um, by Fifth Edition are um, combat, exploration, and interaction. Right. Now uh, we've talked a lot about player about designers interacting with dungeon masters, dungeon masters interacting with players, and through the game and and actually uh, playing the game. Right. Well, what I'm talking about with interaction is I'm talking about all the other ways that people interact with Dungeons & Dragons when they're not playing the game. There's a huge amount of debate about the rules. There's a huge amount of commiseration about the rules, saying, hey, I like this, I don't like that. There's a huge amount of, of, of conversation that happens about, okay, we have this edition, we all love this edition, or we all hate it, as, as was happened in 4th uh, edition at the macro level when we use the term all um, but then you uh, so you have people talking about you know but then there's all this talk about what should be in the next edition uh, there's also a huge amount of actual physical talk there's uh, interaction on Twitter there's interaction through articles there's interaction through literally books on how to function as a dungeon master right going far beyond the direction that is given uh given within the book itself, the Dungeon Master Guide. And that is the interaction of the community, right? That um, interaction of the community really goes much more broad. It, it actually goes more broad than simply the playing of the game. It's one of the most incredible things about the game. This game is so deep and so robust that, um, that people spend time interacting with it, interacting over it, and interacting, interacting over the different elements of it. That is a clear history of the uh, 2016, the 43rd year of Dungeons & Dragons history. Uh, I'm very curious. Uh, what's your thoughts on, uh, on Stranger Things? Did you think that Stranger Things 
did an accurate job of showing what Dungeons & Dragons looked like in the 1980s? Uh, were your friendships strengthened through the playing of the game as shown in the Stranger Things um, television series? Uh, uh, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful day.